Aloha, and welcome to Cooper Union, What's Happening with Human Rights Around Our World on ThinkTech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, in Moana Nui Akea. I'm your host, Joshua Cooper. The title of today's episode is Unwavering Unity for Ukraine and the World, Strong Solidarity and Strategic Solutions. Joining me today is Alex as the Amnesty International Country Specialist. Alex, thank you so much time for appearing with us today on this important historic day regarding the war in Ukraine. Pleasure is mine, Joshua. Thank you so much for having me on. Today is crucial because at this point, we have the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, which is the principal judicial organ of the UN, ordering Russia to immediately halt its military operations in Ukraine and announcing the ICJ order to do so is legally binding. Of course, this order was made as a preliminary measure in a case that Ukraine lodged at the ICJ under the Genocide Convention in response to the Russian invasion on February 24th. Any initial comments on that, especially as Kiev is under a 35-hour curfew right now? Yes, of course. Uh, the decision just recently came up, and, and uh, I appreciate you mentioning that it's a historic decision indeed. Now, the court uh, clearly stated that it found no sign of what uh, President Putin has been uh, calling a genocide in Ukraine. And, and with that, so one of the excuses, major excuses uh, for, for his invasion uh, that, that uh, is off the table. Uh, this Russian uh, invasion is, is unprovoked and, and based on Based on on a fake, so this is this is now a, a cold fact. Cold fact, I would say, established uh, by ICJ. It's very important. No, and really, the other important point today was really two aspects: two world leaders talking to the world about the state of the world, but more importantly, about the future. Zelensky addressed Congress just this morning in D.C., where you're at, and he spoke about for three weeks, every day, every night, Ukraine experience a Pearl Harbor and a 9-11 with thousands of millions of missiles bombing their beautiful cities and calling to end the terrorizing of their people. Joshua, you're right that today is the 21st uh, day of the brutal uh, attack by, by Russia to Ukraine, but today is not, but, but the war has been around for uh, eight years now. And uh, the sentiment that we have noticed, we have seen today uh, on the Hill and also in the White House, uh, did reflect uh, the general, uh, you know, opinion both in in, in Kiev and uh, here in Washington D.C., uh, which uh, is that you know Russia has been engaging in uh, unjustified, uh, you know, war crimes uh, in 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 Ukraine. Uh, there are uh, compelling facts that Russia is not necessarily targeting uh, Ukrainian armed forces, but is targeting you know civilians. And uh, what the President Zelensky, a uh, Ukrainian president, uh, was trying to uh, pitch, if I can say, if you want, uh, here in Washington was, hey, we to, we got to defend ourselves. Um, you know, the general sentiment is that, you know, if Russia stops shooting, uh, that means the war will stop. If Ukraine stops shooting, that means there will be no Ukraine left. Uh, and that's why Ukraine, uh, you know, is trying to, uh, you know, like I said, like pitch international solidarity and also uh, is trying is trying to gain uh, access to the tools that they need, Ukrainians need to uh, defend themselves. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, you know, at this point, um, you know, uh, even uh, the circumstances, uh, our response, uh, you know, uh, international community's response, uh, you know, can't go beyond uh, some certain level. And we have seen President uh, uh, Biden also made a speech and he also announced uh, a new assistance to Ukraine. And that also reflects, uh, like I said, the sentiment here in Washington and also in European capitals. Yes, and Zelensky did call for a United for Peace or a U24 aimed at quickly mobilizing military, financial, and humanitarian support to keep the peace and to quickly save the world to save lives. And his final message was to Biden where he said, you are the leader of the nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. To be the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. So what do you think of this U24? Was it received well? And what are some of the aspects that people are considering now going forward? The, the, I appreciate uh, for that question. I think to, to understand the bigger picture here, we need to turn back, like I mentioned, that the war did not start now. Um, you know, just because uh, Russia, uh, it, which is the largest country, biggest country in the world, uh, 
has been able to invade into the, the biggest country in, in Europe uh, for years and, and, and been able to get away with it. Um, you know, it wants to believe and us to believe that, you know, there's some sort of like territorial dispute uh, you know, between the two countries. That, that's not true, right? Uh, Ukraine, uh, along with other you know, uh, post-Soviet countries, uh, have been recognized by the international community uh, with, uh, you know, within its territorial integrity. And, and Russia you know, uh, was also among those who uh, you know, have you know, uh, recognized Ukraine for years. And now uh, President Putin uh, also wants you to believe that he had no choice but to invade uh, because of, you know, NATO angle and NATO, uh, and, and that he feels that you know he is threatened uh, by this uh, defensive organization, um, and that that comes down to you know the fact that Ukraine is not joining you know NATO in the near future, uh, and and, and uh, you have seen the you know world leaders uh, said as much over and over. We also heard lately uh, just just uh, this morning from uh, NATO Secretary General uh, also reflecting uh, that 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 particular fact that you know um, besides. Uh, you know, President Putin's demand, uh, you know, was uh, largely seen, uh, you know, as a, as a non-starter, you know, by the West, uh, and, and because NATO's, uh, you know, open door policy uh, says sovereign countries can choose, you know, their, their own security alliances alone. Um, now, coming to the question, you know, again, uh, the, the most important component to this story is, is, is the Ukrainian people, you know, uh, wonderful, wonderful people that, uh, you know, Putin, uh, President Putin never got to understand. He hasn't been to Ukraine for many years. Ukrainians want to live in an open, uh, you know, rules-based society, but uh, but that that's something that, you know, Putin cannot accept because how else can you explain it to your own people, right? Um, you know, he feels threatened uh, by, by this avenue because Ukrainians and, and Russians, you know, uh, have, have shared, you know, history uh, in the same neighborhood. And now, you know, he has to explain it to his own people. Um, I hope this answers your question. Uh, you know, uh, this this comes down again uh, to my earlier point that uh, Putin is so keenly focused on, you know, saving you know his power, and this is all about you know his fear of you know, rules based democracy uh, on, on his border. And what Ukrainian president is asking today, and also that's what the you know White House uh, seems to have reflected today, is that you know uh, we we have to uh, do our best to make sure that Ukrainian people are able uh, to capable to protect themselves because uh, there is no end game here for uh, from from Russia's perspective you know I mean uh, if they uh, if they commit uh, you know uh, Ukraine to not let's say uh, turn towards the West then who else is the next you know Russia is gonna go to other neighbors and uh, you know uh, the, the, the notion that you know a superpower was nuclear uh, you know uh, nuclear uh, weapon arms can actually in the 21st century um, attack its neighbors, uh, it does actually uh, take us to a different and more dangerous uh, world that we had. Very true. That's probably why the prime ministers of Poland, Czech Republic and Slovenia even took a train into Kiev yesterday to show solidarity. They recognize exactly what you said, that while it's today Ukraine, tomorrow could easily be their countries and pointing out where would it stop. And maybe that's why Zelensky was saying maybe World War III has already begun and that these are the first acts. But as you have said, there's been consistent actions of Putin over the time where he actually has, like you said, in Crimea, but also there's patterns of even bombing civilian targets and hospitals in various conflicts throughout time. So this is a pattern of Putin really committing war crimes and aggression against his neighbors over a certain time. But this is maybe the first time that a country is really standing up for its self-determination. You know, the only missing part here is missing angle here is uh, the Ukrainian people. You know, uh, unfortunately, the, the brazen nature of, you know, the, these attacks you know, had had uh, devastating you know, horrific consequences to the entire country. Um, you know, over the last 21 days, you know, Russian army has bombed residential apartment buildings. Uh, you can see amnesty uh, statements 
uh, on, you know, we have very compelling uh, statements indicating that, you know, it has bombed sacred you know, burial grounds and shelled kindergartens, orphanages, deliberately the hospitals, uh, even, uh, even we can see it, there are reports out there that they have been shelling, you know, a mem Holocaust memorial complex. Um, and, and then reports about, you know, uh, explosions and, and uh, you know, uh, in and around, you know, near, uh, you know, like the capital city of Kiev, uh, coming even even now as, as we speak. You know, um, they they have they have spurred mass hunger, and, and they've caused so many you know to flee their homes. I'm talking about three millions of people. I'm three millions uh, in the 21st century in just 21 days. Uh, that's the cost of this war. Uh, the the latest you know uh, UN estimates that you know uh, they are the marching towards. You know, as uh, million, but numbers uh, can actually uh, uh, become, uh, you know, for, it's some somewhere between five and ten millions. So many countries uh, that you have named, uh, they have opened their borders, their hearts to Ukrainian people. They opened their homes to those feeling Ukraine. But the question that we need to answer is, what is the end game here? Again, okay, Ukraine cannot join NATO. Uh, we, we get that, uh, but uh, you know, put it that that is not. Uh, what Putin, uh, what, what bothers Putin, you know, he and uh, if you take, you know, close look at his uh, statements, you know, he ha he start talking about uh, NATO's uh, borders somewhere like between, you know, return back to between 19, I think 98, uh, 1997 level, which means it also targets several, you know, uh, current NATO members. Um, is the NATO the only entity that that bothers Putin, you know, he and uh, you know the people around him. We talk talk about the European Union. Um, you know, uh, the, the goal, you know, as you have noticed that some European leaders have been in Kiev, but they also visited Moscow for you know uh, even before uh, you know uh, Russian army across the border. Uh, was Putin genuinely open for being talked out? So that is the question that uh, we came to understand that, uh, that, that uh, needs to be answered. Unfortunately, the answer is not yes at this point. So it's a really important point because if you look at the attack on the maternity ward and the bombing of Mariupol, unfortunately, it's a similar pattern in Chechnya from 1999 to 2000, where they destroyed or damaged several hospitals in the capital of Grozny. Also in Syria, when he joined the Assad regime and bombing and launched initial attacks against hospitals located in the opposition controlled areas. So even the sadder part is when they started moving the hospitals underground in caves and they used the bunker buster bombs. So really we understand that this is a long-term pattern and more must be done, that there was diplomacy efforts by world leaders going to Moscow, but you can highlight as you've raised and how Amnesty has documented throughout this entire 21 days, the conflict and more importantly, those human rights violations taking place by the Putin regime. I mean, so uh, international uh, has been on the ground. So we have, you know, uh, we have uh, folks working both in you know, Ukraine and also in surrounding countries. Uh, and the Russia office uh, also has been around, you know, uh, and uh, uh, we, we have members that, you know, empower us and um, all over the country in the US, uh, in Europe, uh, they have been, Galvanized, you know, their efforts and uh, trying to understand, uh, you know, all try all possible tools that you know uh, we can use at this point to uh, respond uh, this uh, this this uh, you know um, increasing, uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, the massive massive human rights uh, concern uh, that 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 is right now happening. Believe in. No, it it is exciting though to see how everyday people are stepping up. Uh, with Eastern European volunteers leaving strollers at train stations for the arriving Ukrainian refugee families who fled only with their essentials. Those photos at the train station show that we can all do more. Also, Chef Andres with the World Central Kitchen serving meals. And it really brings for a moment a lesson that we all need to visit more far-flung places to identify with people in other countries because there is that sense of we're all in this together because we have to stand up for fundamental freedoms, but also as Zelensky said today, for the future. And it is amazing to see just example of the Dutch. They have just 17 million people, but they've already raised 125 million in a single day 
just on Monday of this week. You know, um, I, I totally agree with you. You know, this is, uh, like I said, this is the war over freedom. You know, uh, Ukraine, Ukraine people have chosen freedom and uh, they want to live in a uh, rules-based society. Uh, Russia, uh, like I said, being the largest country in the world, is not acting like a responsible actor here uh, just because, uh, you know, they've been able to get away with it. As you mentioned, Chechnya, I can even, you know, bring up Georgia and, and other examples uh, for many years. Uh, doesn't uh, mean that, you know, uh, the world uh, should turn its blind eyes and, and, and let this happen on our watch. So uh, you're right that, uh, you know, so many people from European countries, I, I was at the border just uh, last week, uh, I, I, uh, just a couple, uh, I actually went there even before the war broke, and I saw people, you know, uh, from different countries uh, across the border, like in Poland, uh, just voluntarily would offer their service, uh, you know, their homes, and they open their hearts, and they try to respond. There's, 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 there's a, you know, there's an international, you know, uh, the international community that uh, we've been talking about for many years, but finally uh, we, we see that, uh, you know, uh, how in reality uh, is galvanized, uh, you know, um, by, um, you know, again, thanks to Putin's, uh, President Putin's, uh, you know, uh, decision to challenge, uh, again, rule space, uh, the world that we live in, uh, is uh, right now, uh, uh, you know, responsible, acting responsibly, and, and understands that again, this is the moment for us to uh, to uh, again stop this from going even uh, you know uh, further catastrophe because what is happening right now in Ukraine around Ukraine is a catastrophe, 21st century catastrophe. This is not a 20th, 19th century uh, dictator that uh, you know uh, tries to you know um, um, you know uh, take over and 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 move on. What uh, Putin and his, his uh, folks have done in, in in Chechnya, as you mentioned, and in Syria, indicates that uh, you know uh, you know unfortunately things might become really messier before they, they get better. It's true. It's a it's a global game that you can see he's playing, and also an action of what he does inside the country to deny those human rights and information. And I mean, the sad part is you almost would say there's. You wake up in Russia, the news media has been silenced, almost gone. But it was exciting to see the editor, Marina, actually be so brave to stand up and to hold the sign for no war and let that the state-controlled media was lying to the people and calling for an interwar. It's, it is people inside Russia who are standing up against the new laws being passed to try to silence them, and even people holding just blank signs with nothing on it as well. Maybe you could highlight some of those aspects of what's going on inside with human rights being violated, even the rule that 15 years in prison for newscasts such as this. What are some other aspects that the world needs to be aware of? You know, Russia has a, a history of gross human rights violations inside the country. And you're right that, you know, what happened, uh, just with mere fact, uh, you know, memorial organization uh, a couple uh, weeks ago, uh, was a clear fact that you know, President Putin is trying to rewrite the history, uh, you know, that that he imagines, he understands, and 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 use it as a pretext to drive these human rights violations beyond its border. What's, what we're witnessing is transnational human rights, uh, gross human rights uh, violations. That, uh, as you perfectly uh, mentioned, that it did study in in Russia, in the national community of was, uh, you know, we. We did document, they don't document, you know, those human rights violations in Russia. And, uh, but unfortunately, uh, you know, again, he has been able to get away with it. Uh, you know, uh, he has been able to uh, convince the Russian people and himself, uh, most importantly, uh, you know, to a uh, wrong history. He believes in, you know, uh, his own lies, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, you know, what memorial organization was doing in Russia was documenting uh, those, those dark years of Russian Soviet history. Uh, you know what Russians back then did uh, inside, uh, you know, within Russia and also outside of Russia. Um, the, the reason why Putin was going uh, after those uh, folks is that because uh, you know he wanted to, you know, again, like I said, um, not only uh, press the wrong 
lesson of the history, uh, you know, thinking that you know uh, the alternative to that is they probably will be people will not learn a lesson from history. But unfortunately, um, you know, unbeknownst to him, alternative to not uh, learning the right lesson of the history is learning the wrong lesson of the history, and that's the uh, consequences we are seeing right now. Um, people in Russia. Unfortunately, they have, uh, you know, there are really wonderful, wonderful Russians that for many years have been trying to push back, uh, raise their voices, and uh, but they have been a subject to not only, you know, again, uh, uh, gross human rights violation inside the country, they have also been subject to, uh, you know, something that we call transnational, uh, you know, human rights uh, violation, transnational repression. Um, now, uh, Putin is, uh, Putin and his uh, administration, they're trying to export you know, the human rights violations, uh, gross human rights violations from the region, uh, as you can see right now, to Ukraine and to other countries. Yes, and it, it begins there. What is exciting to see also is the resistance. Uh, just one week ago, the Kiev Classic Symphony Orchestra actually played at the same central square in the Maidan, which was that focal point of the revolution. And they played a concert there showing their strength through music. And this 25 minute concert was of course in freezing weather, nationally televised, but it was exciting to say, show how they're still unafraid, even with the bombs flying. And of course, it's that spirit that they're saying, and that I think was also brought up by Jamala, who also is now in Istanbul, who won a contest for Eurovision. And she was pointing out how history is repeating itself. But I think we can see that there's a new trend where people are actually standing up for the values of human rights, these universal values, and also standing up for what we think should be done. And maybe you could share some of what you saw since you were there, of course, just at the border a week ago, and, and how people are standing up for their, their human rights. You know, there are two components here, uh, how to help those, to those who are inside the country and uh, trying to uh, you know, flow, uh, get out uh, as soon as they can. Uh, you know, uh, and, and, you know, they have life uh, to leave behind. And um, unfortunately, uh, Russian forces don't even, uh, you know, uh, allow them to leave, uh, you know, uh, their neighborhoods. You know, uh, there are several um, corridors that have been uh, negotiated uh, with Russian uh, forces lately. And, uh, you know, when people try to use those corridors to leave, uh, you know, Russians deliberately, uh, Russian forces, uh, are targeting them and, 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 and you know, killing them, unfortunately. Um, we, we have been, uh, we've heard several numbers, you know, from Ukrainian uh, government and international organizations. Um, uh, and uh, at this point, uh, I have, you know, I've seen so many creative ways also you know, people outside of, you know, as of Ukraine are trying to use to help them with, you know, um, you know, uh, but they can financially, you know, uh, support them. For instance, I've seen people using Airbnb, you know, uh, trying to book apartments, you know, uh, you know, assuming that eventually those apartments, even if they don't visit Ukraine, but people, the owners of the apartments are able to have access to the funding. That's one thing. Another thing, obviously, there are, uh, you know, humanitarian organizations, uh, and then they are on the ground and they're trying to use, uh, you know, they're trying to reach uh, with humanitarian aid. Uh, but uh, again, I, like I said, for those who are inside Ukraine, for them, situation is different. Uh, you know, some sometimes even uh, you know, international organizations can't find a safe way to uh, safe pass. Uh, you know, to, to safe way to to reach to Ukrainian people uh, with their aids. Um, and uh, for those who have left the country, um, obviously. We talk about millions of people, and uh, they need your emotional support, your support, financial, your you know. Uh, I mean, look, this is the largest, you know, the massive uh, human rights catastrophe that Europe uh, has, you know, faced since the end of Second World War. And obviously, it, it cut uh, everyone like, off guard. I mean, even if we did see this coming, uh, you know, we didn't want to believe in this coming. You know, Ukrainian people were not, you know, uh, expecting that. You know, look, if you turn back and think about, you know, uh, Ukrainians and Russians and their shared history, uh, you know, uh, and, and the narrative that President Putin was trying to push for years, you know, uh, it completely contradicts against what we are seeing on the region right now. Uh, Putin was uh, saying that Ukrainians are our cousins. And we need to, you know, uh, live together. We need to live together. So this, we have shared history. But today, 
he's uh, he's sharing, you know, he's he's sending his arms and he's killing his own cousins, you know, uh, and this is hard to comprehend. They do need all kinds of support. Uh, anything that, you know, international community can do. First of all, here in the U.S., uh, you know, try to reach out to your own congressional members and uh, elected officials, try to make sure that we are using all the possible tools at our disposal to be there for them. Secondly, again, uh, there are humanitarian organizations, international organizations, organizations like Amnesty. Uh, we have we have launched campaigns. We are sending out letters to Ukraine ambassador, uh, pardon me, uh, Russian ambassador and uh, Russian defense ministry, um, and trying to raise awareness and uh, trying to again uh, make sure that you know they do see international. Backlash. There is no, you know, alternative, uh, you know, uh, let's say history or reality or facts that you know Putin wants us to live in. There's, a, you know, international community is uh, you know, right now uh, by understanding, uh, you know, that that the history that the world we live, used to live in even 21 days ago is long gone. So uh, how uh, how we're gonna reestablish our new world? is actually, it, it's, it's up to us. So we all need to do our best to make sure that Ukrainian people don't feel uh, alone. And and this is not their fight for Ukraine. This is their fight for all of us, for 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 Europe, for, uh, you know, democracies, for uh, freedoms, for human rights, for, you know, uh, for our future. You know, if we, uh, if we just let this, if we let President Putin slide and and, and others slide, uh, you know, by uh, committing these gross human rights violations, then I can't even imagine, you know, uh, uh, the world, uh, you know, uh, that we're going to live in. How is it going to be? And how, uh, you know, other uh, dictators and authoritarian leaders, uh, you know, will try to take their own lesson, wrong lesson, and will try to, uh, you know, steal uh, our you know, um, rules-based uh, lifestyle and, and our future as well. It's true. It's the, you could see the decline of democracy people have been talking about for decades since around 2005 on the Freedom Index. But it has been exciting to see some changes. I think corporations with over 300 companies withdrawing to condemn the aggression, the calorie curtain of Coke and McDonald's falling on Russia. What we need to see now, since they can't buy a Big Mac in Moscow or book a room at a Hilton, is which one of these firms are more of a PR point or a political one. But I know we only have one minute left. I really also want you to know that here in Hawaii, the Lay of Aloha for World Peace is partnering with many places as well with Aloha for Ukraine. And people around the world are focusing, as you pointed out, that there's an, a way that we want the world to be that is rooted in the rule of law with a rules-based order where every nation, large and small, is free and able to exercise its right of self-determination. And I wanna thank you for all that you're doing with Amnesty International, documenting and sharing with the world the truth of what's happening on the ground. Thank you so much for, for all you do. And this is, uh, again, the situation on the ground is depressing as it is, uh, you know, shockingness of, of, of what we have seen today is very much uh, difficult to process. So thank you so much for, for helping uh, the US audience and uh, everyone who's watching to uh, at least uh, understand what is going on. And, uh, and, and thank you for, for your coverage. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.